Don't make me dial up to him. <laughs> 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 Brian, can you talk about the offensive performance on Saturday, particularly the way you guys turned the corner in the second half? What sort of adjustments did you make and what did you think of those guys finishing? Um, you know, I don't know we made a bunch of adjustments at halftime. We tweaked a couple things. Um, you know, they're doing a little bit more of some stuff we'd anticipate them doing, just not quite as much. Um, you know, really, I thought, you know, we started out pretty fast. We had, what, 12-play drive that we ended up getting no points with. We uh, had, a, you know, an incomplete pass on a on a second and 10 play that, you know, is a, is a bang-bang play. And, uh, you know, otherwise we're in a third and manageable down there in the red zone. We maybe don't have to try for a field goal um, on fourth down. But, you know, we started out well. And then the next series we had a, a three and out, which is, uh, you know, kind of the kryptonite for any offense really but uh, and you know they had a couple long possessions so it took us a minute to kind of get some rhythm going after that first uh, after that first long drive and a three and out um, but you know there was a couple times we had a, we had a chance in the red zone uh, when we threw the interception um, that would have got us off to a, you know a faster start for sure missed opportunity there and then uh, obviously scored right before half but um, I think our guys knew and were confident, knew we could move the ball and, and we're doing good things. We just, you know, we got to get better at finishing some drives and then some, you know, the penalties obviously uh, kill, didn't necessarily, I mean, obviously the one, the holding where the touchdown came off the board killed us, um, but putting us behind the sticks too was with some procedure and some things we need to clean up. Need to clean up there, but, uh, you know, overall, obviously we improved. Uh, you know, the, the disappointing thing is, is you know, that's shoot. Everybody walked off the field feeling like we should have won, uh, should have won that game, and there's no question we should have won that game. You saw the improvement in Chris's numbers, obviously, on paper. Do you talk about maybe the improvement in his mentality? You know, maybe a pick like that in, you know, the second quarter might have killed his confidence, but having him come back in the second half and really light it up. Yeah, I think a, I think a couple things. One, I think, obviously, the confidence he has in himself the confidence that he has in his receivers, and then I think the confidence we have in him. Um, uh, you know, he's, again, much improved from a year ago. Uh, that being said, there's still a ton of stuff that he can do better, and there's still some stuff that, you know, we still left some points out there, uh, besides the obvious ones. Um, you know, there's a couple things here or there that, you know, second and ten instead of, trying to hit the home run, we, we checked the ball down, we put ourselves in third and four where, you know, we, we were pretty good all night in, in those situations. So some things that as, as he gets older and he gets more mature and, you know, that, you know, not every play has to be the home run, manage, manage the game, if that makes sense. And so he's going to continue to improve on that. And, uh, you know, Denarius has, has done a great job with that. And he just has a lot of confidence in those wideouts right now. You know, Coach Miller has done an unbelievable job uh, with those guys. And we've got some... We've got some talent on the perimeter, and, and Coach does, Miller does a great job of getting those guys coached up, and they, they play fast, and they play hard, and we have some mismatch you know, stuff out there. I know you just mentioned Denarius. How has he helped Chris you know, until this point? Oh, I mean, I think, it, I think a ton. I think you can relate to Chris. It wasn't that long ago that Denarius walked exactly in Chris's shoes and, so, uh, and, and was very successful in those shoes. And so, uh, you know, Chris doesn't, I don't know that Chris can go anywhere in Bozeman and not hear about, you know, Coach McGee and, and what he did during his time. So it's a pretty, uh, I mean, it, it's an easy translation from, from, from A to B, and, and Daenerys is doing, doing a great job with him. With the performance that Chris did have in the passing game, does that allow you to kind of maybe take a breath finally and say, okay, we, we know we can throw the ball now? And does it give you a little more clarity going forward or a little more confidence? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely confidence. I think, you know, confidence in our wideouts, confidence in him, um, you know, just confidence in general, like you said. You know, that being said, you know, we still want to be a physical, you know, I, if you would have told me we were going to drop back and throw the ball 40 whatever times it was, I would have told you we were crazy. And, uh, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of how it worked out. And, um, you know, we gave ourselves a chance to win doing that. Um, and, but that being said, we need to, you know, consistently, you know, still work on the run game and, and get to being multi-dimensional. Um, you know, I thought we ran the ball effectively at times Saturday, uh, but that's going to be very important for us moving forward in, in conference play. The, pro the progress of the guards, how much will that help but just in the inside run game? Oh, it'll help a bunch. I mean, you lose a guy that's on the practice squad for the San Francisco 49ers right now, you, you know, you're watching... You know, now you're watching 
North Dakota today who we played a year ago and you're like, oof, old, old 75 really uh, <laughs> makes a big difference in there. And, and, even, and even Monty, uh, you know, that, not that he had played much and he was a new starter a year ago, but he was, he was twitchy and had some stuff to him. So those guys will continue to develop inside and, uh, and, and will continue to develop a running back too. I mean, it's, you know, it's not running the ball is at all on the offensive line. It's, uh, you know, being able to throw the ball and keep some, some numbers, some reasonable numbers in the box. It's, uh, you know, I've said for a long time, I've been, it's kind of, you know, kind of my deal. I've been an offensive line coach for most of my, most of my career. And I've always said that, a, you know, a darn good running back makes an average old line look really good. And so, uh, you know, we're going to continue to develop that, at that position too, which is going to help us. Well, that's a really heated competition, a right guard between uh, Taylor and Caleb. Can you talk about what each guy brings to the position and maybe add, if they add a different dynamic? Is um, yeah, I think that, you know, Caleb is, is the guy that has played more. Obviously, he's been around, he's seen more, he's had more reps, whether it's practice and games, whatever. And so, you know, he understands big picture-wise, I think, more what, what we're trying to accomplish and, and probably has a larger toolbox, whereas, you know, Taylor is a little bit, more twitchy, if that makes sense, has a little bit more snap to him, suddenness. Um, and so, you know, those guys complement each other very well. And again, I don't necessarily see it as just right guard or left guard. I think we have inside guys and we have outside guys and we need to continue to uh, to grow as an offensive line and, and make sure that we always are putting ourselves in a position where we have our five best, uh, regardless of whether it's right guard or left guard or whatever the situation is on the field. Do you like having a buy this early? You know, I don't, I don't know that I've ever had a buy this early, so I don't I don't know. Uh, you know, after last Saturday, you'd like to say, man, I'd like to line up and play again and, and, and get this thing going, but this is where the buy is, so it, I mean, it just kind of is what it is, I think, at this point. North Dakota is somewhat exotic on defense, so does the extra week, week give you guys a chance to kind of install some of that stuff, or I guess prepare for some of that yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They're, uh, I mean, man, they get off the bus blitzing from what I watched. I remember that a year ago. Uh, I don't know if I slept a wink a year ago before we played North Dakota as the offensive line coach because, man, they bring pressure from the first snap to the last snap, and it's coming from everywhere. You know, it's it's linebackers, it's secondary, it's safety, it's corner, it's it's coming from everywhere, and uh, and they don't shy away from it. I mean, if they ain't getting home, they're gonna keep bringing it. So, you know, we've got to have a great plan for that. Um, and uh, and then be ready for it. So yeah, it, it, it you know I don't think that hurts for sure. What stands out most to you about Jabari? I'm sorry. What stands out most to you about Jabari? Shoot, just look at him. I mean, the guy looks like he could be playing for Coach Fish. He, uh, I mean, he's just a big, long guy that has, I mean, really phenomenal ball skills. I mean. I know you guys don't get to see it every day, but some of the catches he's made, and just even one-on-ones, and um, his ability to go up, and I, I think he pretty consistently can go up and, you know, we say rebound the ball, get it at its highest point, and uh, so that makes him, you know, his stature obviously sets him apart from some of the other guys for sure, but uh, but his ability to go up and rebound the ball and take it away from people at its highest point, I think, is is probably the biggest thing.